few bikes behind us here from the collection have very kindly brought them out for us and they're going to start them up for us as well. Uh, we're going to start with the Honda, then I believe we're going to go onto the Rudge and then finally onto the BSA. Uh, they do get quite loud, so if you do need some earplugs, uh, please do let my colleagues know. They will happily find some. Now, uh, Patrick here. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Good morning. Very well, thank you. It's a fantastic turnout. The sun has joined us as well. Uh, but we're going to start, let's talk about the Honda to begin with. How long has this been in the collection? So, well, this bike's been in, uh, been with us in, actually since the 90s, but there's a bit of a longer story to it, if you've yep. got time. So, in the mid-60s, Mr. Honda, so it's your... So Ichiro Honda, the, the actual founder of Honda, gave uh, the, national, the, the then Montague Motor Museum an RC164, which I think was ex-Bob McIntyre, as a thank you to, to Britain for buying his bikes and for supporting the racing effort. 30 years later, they came back to us and said, can we have that one back? Because we haven't got that one in our own collection. Would you like an RC162 from 1961? Would you like the ex-Mark Halewood bike? Yes, please. Yeah. So, hence, that's been here 30 years, but it's a gift that's, that goes back to, to the 60s. And it's, it, I mean, I had a quick sit on this this morning, a very privileged to have a sit on it. It's absolutely tiny. It's so tight and tiny in there. And the engine is minuscule. It's a little 249cc four-cylinder. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... If you like the Japanese, you know, in, in the 50s, racing bikes, you know, big British singles, and then MV started to come in, you know, with, 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 the, with, the, with the Maltese. But then it was the Japanese, really, Honda, sort of, when they looked at it, they thought, we're going to compete on the World Championship stage, and we're going to build, you know, multi-cylinder bikes in all the classes. So the 250cc, for, uh, 250cc4, you know, real, real, it's like a piece of clockwork, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Now, come and have a look at this later on, ladies and gents. Have a look at how long the tank is compared to where you're actually sat on it. You sat right over the rear wheel and this tiny, tiny little engine in there. Uh, but enough of us. Uh, would you actually like to hear it? She's sounding happy. By the way, the reason you rev them, and the Honda mechanics always say rev them up reasonably high, or else you don't get any oil around the top end. Yep. Everyone always says, aren't you revving up from cold too fast? But you're actually told to rev them high to lubricate the top end. Fantastic. What was that up to, RPM-wise? That was about uh, 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Ladies and gents, can I ask you to put your hands together for our volunteers beyond us here on that wonderful motorcycle? Patrick, come on over. That, that was fantastic. Wonderful, I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been a big Mike Halewood fan all my life, so actually having his first TT winning bike here is, is, is so special. Now, uh, there's a lot of you, and the, the antenna is right behind, so you might not be able to hear us all, but you will be able to hear all of this on YouTube tonight, so you can see there's cameras filming this and a separate microphone, so you'll be able to hear all this on YouTube. Um, now, that was very special indeed, but we're going to go a bit further back in history. We're going back to this, 1928. 1928, so this is a, a Grand Prix bike, a racing bike from 1928. It, it did race in the Isle of Man, but this is actually the bike that Graham Walker won the 1928 Ulster Grand Prix on. Graham Walker, you will know his son, Murray Walker. Yeah. So Graham Walker was a great motorcycle racer, TT rider. What a lot of people maybe don't know is that when he retired from motorcycle journalism in the 50s, he came to live at Bewley 
and created the original motorcycle collection here with the late Lord Montague. Wow. So there's a number of the older bikes in the collection today which are here because of Graham Walker. Um, this is the bike that he won the, the Ulster Grand Prix on in 1928. The first road race to be run at an average speed of over 80 miles an hour. And that's 1928. So 1928, we're in 2024 now. It's coming up to 100 years old, this thing. But I'm looking over. It looks like you're about ready to get her got fingers crossed again. Can, am I right in saying? Hand gear change. Hand gear change. Brakes as usual. Now brake. Your foot brake on here is linked. So both back and front brakes are actually linked together. Graham Walker had a dodgy leg, so he had the brakes modified. But very successful bike. He had a Rogers. Yeah, it's not, even nowadays it's still very highly prized. And um, there's various ones still dragged, you know, sprint raced. Yeah. And it's surprising what they do do. Well, let's see what this one can do. Over to you. Wow, absolutely. The sound difference between the two is quite remarkable, going from four to single. These are more like a speedway bike, what people would think of as a speedway bike these yeah. days. But um, yeah, they, they were very fast. In their day, they were, yeah, they were cutting edge technology. Yeah. But it was, um, then they uh, started to come in with like twos, threes, fours, and yeah, obviously trying to make bikes go a bit quicker. But they, um, development sort of came on, but they were very, very sporty in their day. Yeah. Fantastic. Ladies and gents, please put your hands together for the bike and also a uh, wonderful, wonderful colleague here. Patrick, come on over. So we've had four cylinders, we've had single cylinder, and now we are coming over to uh, BSA here. Uh, I, we had a sneak peek of this this morning. It sounded so good. Yeah, so, so you think the, you know, the four-cylinder race bike sounds nice, it does. Um, really do want to put the earplugs in for this one, it, it, it's painful. So, so it's, a, it's a road bike, um, it's, a, it's a cafe racer. So you imagine uh, you know, the Tunnock boys in the 1960s, you know, a tuned bike, uh, annoying the police, you know, leaving the Ace Cafe, bombing up the M1. Yeah. Um, this is that, think of that era really, so uh, yeah, nice piece of kit. Excellent. Well, on that note, when you do leave the museum today, please do so responsibly. I know we've probably revved a lot of you up, but please do so responsibly. Now, looking over here, what's, what, 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 what was that then? You've got the tw twin carburetors, TC10 carburetors. It's got what they call matchbox float chambers, which we're trying to isolate the uh, float chamber away from the vibration. So you have to tickle the carburetors up first. All three of these bikes, you have to do that. Bring your carburetors, no cold start chokes or anything. Yeah. And uh, so you, you, know, you had to you know, work on them and sort of know what you're doing. Yeah. But they're just lovely to ride when you get used to them. Yes. Well, one thing that you can't see on the videos, uh, obviously you can hear them and so forth, but the smell. Mm. I really, really wish we could capture the smell because stood here... smell of vision oh, That's oh, what we need. so, so <laughs> good. Right, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to let you start this up. Have a listen to this.
absolutely wonderful. Now, of, of all three of them, this one, I mean, it still sounds relatively modern. Yes, they're, they're just a uh, yeah, very good British motorcycle. As developments came on, they became more civilised. Um, you know, they, I could, I'd ride this to work every day. I, I would too. I would too. It looked absolutely wonderful. So, a massive thank you from it. Ladies That's and gentlemen, can I please ask you to put your hands together for the National Motor Museum and our three motorcycles. And what I'm really pleased to see is that you bought your new edition here. Yeah. This was very kindly donated recently, wasn't it? Yes, it was one of the uh, Hinkley Triumphs. And, you know, we're trying to keep our you know, collection policies up and going. So, you know, it's uh, one of those things that it, it needs collecting. Yeah. In years to come, people are going to, well, people in this sort of younger age are going to be saying, why haven't they got any of those in here? Yeah, yeah. That's what we're trying to do. Well, that's very much my era. 94, that's very much my era. So wonderful to see that joining the museum. Yeah even if it does make me feel quite old all of a sudden. <laughs> Unfortunately, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. First of our runners up here at Beaulieu Bikers Day is. Tis our custom. You all are first of our runner up, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together for our runner up. The next runner up is. You, sir, with a speed trip. Well done to you. You're still going home with a £50 voucher from Infinity Motorcycle. A big congratulations to you, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for your next runner up. Well done to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Presented there by Charlotte. Congratulations. You Thank must you. be pleased. I am. I am, yeah. I'm pleased that you made it here as well. It is a lovely bike. You, sir, are our winner. So let you just put your hands together for Beauty Bikers. Best in show. It is you, sir. Thanks. Well done to you. Now, will you tell me what you've done to it? Uh, yeah, so a few things. Yeah, obvious ones. The clip-ons. Yep. Um, I stripped all the paint off. Yep. Um, polished that up. Uh, removed the subframe. Um, the Jack Daniels can, which everyone loves. Yeah. Um, and then there's many more things, but it could be all day. <laughs> it's very, very cool and a very worthy winner. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for your winner here at Beauty Bikers Day. Well done to you.